Welcome to Ask Dr. Allen, Life by Design. Today I'm going to focus on wearable technology. And I think it's important to uh, know where you are to decide, well, where is that I want to be going? And I'll give you an example. I wear an Aura ring and an iWatch. Uh, and that gives me data for when I'm sleeping and real time when I'm exercising or uh, just experiencing stress. And uh, the technology industry has very, very rapidly exploded from just the old school heart rate monitor, which is important while you're exercising, but really doesn't give a tremendous amount of useful data for each individual person. But nowadays, so uh, we've have an, a rapidly increasing number of metrics that we can study to create really optimal health in an individual uh, person. My father-in-law uh, just got an iWatch and one day he was experiencing what he felt to be called palpitations. And we FaceTimed and I had him hold the watch to the phone and put his finger on the crown and it showed his personal EKG and I could reassure him that he wasn't having a heart attack that he didn't have an arrhythmia, but just that he probably was feeling some level of stress. And that immediately, as I was talking to him and reassured him, I watched his heart rate come back down. And so anecdotes like that really show that the technology, uh, when properly worn, is uh, is something that can really impact somebody's uh mind and stress level anxiety uh, and even save lives some of the obstacles though that the data is not necessarily perfect and particularly when you're having extremes of exercise because when you're really really pushing yourself your blood flow isn't the same in your fingers and in your wrist which is where most of these wearables are worn meaning if you wear for a long period of time that imperfect data becomes less and less noisy uh, and will give you your baseline level of health. And that gives you the opportunity to start making changes and seeing if those changes are really affecting your baseline. Now, as a heart surgeon, I'm most concerned with the heart and its function. And uh, happily, that is a area that's really, really uh, advanced rapidly in all wearables. And for the sake of argument uh, today, I'm going to focus just on on three: uh, the Whoop, the Aura Ring, uh, and the iWatch. Uh, and they all have really, really good measurements in looking at your heart. Uh, one is your baseline level of heart, but more importantly, and something that is focused on quite a bit now, is heart rate variability. Now, what is that? We all look at that and we see this on the app and say, well, my heart rate variability gave me a crown or it gave me a opportunity for improvement. But what it means is that what is your heart rate uh, over intervals in time? Meaning that uh, if you have a heart rate, say of 70 and you're exercising and your heart rate goes up to 140, 150, but then rapidly comes down, that's a increased heart rate variability. And that means you're in relatively good health. Uh, conversely, a low heart rate variability uh, may be associated with stress or fatigue or poor health. And, and all that's controlled by something called the autonomic nervous system. We've all heard the concept of fight or flight. Well, that's the sympathetic nervous system. And that was really important in evolution because uh, we wanted to raise our heart rate and raise our awareness if uh, a predator was going to eat us uh, or there was a scarcity of food and we needed to really be aware and, and, and have all of our oxygen pumping to our organs in order to fight uh, or get out of that situation. But the rest and digest stage or the parasympathetic nervous system is equally important and that keeps your heart rate low and that's a sense of calm and that heart rate variability is important when looking at stress and cortisol release and, and that low heart rate variability may be associated with an increased risk in obesity. The next area which is uh, I think part of something I talk about a lot which is meds medication, exercise, diet, and sleep. Well, sleep is a critical part of your overall health. And it's something that most of us, at least in America, uh, don't prioritize. We go to bed late or scrolling or 
or binging on Netflix and, and we're not getting good sleep. We're watching some sort of crazy uh, movie at night and then wonder, well, why is my sleep so off? I went to bed at 10 o'clock. Well, if you watch Squid Games right before you went to sleep, perhaps you're not going to get good sleep that night. And this data will show you and convince you of that because in the absence of data, you say, well, geez, I slept for seven hours, so I'm good, right? Well, the quantity of sleep is important, but the quality uh, of sleep is, is equally uh, necessary. And in addition, many of these apps now will measure your oxygen saturation when you're asleep. But why is that important? Well, that could predict that you have something called sleep apnea. Uh, if your partner is saying, you know, geez, I mean, could you go sleep in another room because you're snoring all night long? Uh, well, perhaps uh, you look at your data and it shows that your oxygen levels are dropping during that snoring. And, and maybe you have a, a problem which could be easily fixed uh, by going to your doctor and showing them your results. Activity is uh, the area where wearables started and, and they were embraced by the fitness industry and really the fitness industry guided uh, the pathway into the health industry. But with all that value proposition and all of that information to suggest you should have it, how do you choose one and what are the obstacles uh, of, of an app? Well, first is cost. They are significantly expensive and many of them have added costs. For instance, uh, an Aura Ring is somewhere between $400 and $800 depending upon uh, what finish you have and, and uh, what, uh, what version of it is. And then there's that hidden cost of $6 a month for a subscription, which is necessary uh, for it not to be just an obsolete ring. The iWatch is uh, in many cases prohibitively expensive to people, especially the newer ones, which range somewhere between $800 and $1,500. And then on top of it, a cell service, and on top of it, all the different apps uh, that may be added on. So it can become uh, quite a cost uh, for, for people. And, and a Whoop is uh, $240, bucks, and then there's also a subscription to that. So uh, it, it does depend upon cost on, uh, in, on choosing an app. The second, and I think equally important, is comfort. If it's not comfortable, you're not going to wear it. And uh, that's one of the reasons I have both the Aura Ring and the iWatch, because uh, Aura is particularly good at night. It's, uh, it's a ring, so it's a comfortable ring and, and you can wear your sleep. Uh, the iWatch, if you're a rough sleeper like I am and you're constantly about the bed, well, you, you can find you're tearing apart your comforter uh, by moving around at night. You, you may be scraping your, your partner's face when you're uh, you're in your throes of, of sleep or dreaming. And, and so uh, that might not be the ideal uh, thing to wear at night. Uh, also, depending upon what you do for a living, uh, my Aura Rain has got scrapes all over it because I like to work uh, on different projects. And, and if you forget it's there, uh, it's easily scuffable. And then it, it looks somewhat unsightly uh, after a few months and you really can't paint it or make it look better. Um, but uh, finally, it's what your specific need is. Are you using it for health? Are you using it for fitness? Uh, are you using it to monitor a chronic condition? There are some downsides uh, though, and um, those are equally important. If you're someone who wants to know what's happening in your body at that moment, your app needs it, your device needs a screen. Uh, the downside of Aura and Whoop is that there is no screen. So all of the information you get is put into an app uh, or you look at it on your laptop and then say where you were the night before uh, or put your app on the next day and it'll tell you how you slept or, or what your recovery level is, but you're not getting something immediate on the screen. Uh, the iWatch is the only device or uh, some of the Garmin's as well uh, that you can look at your fitness or your activity at the moment it's occurring. And uh, that is a bit of a downside when you have to go through your day not knowing really where you are. Uh, but it does lead to the iWatch's unique ability to diagnose a problem. Like I mentioned earlier with the EKG, you can measure that real time, see if you're having a heart attack, if you're having some sort of arrhythmia like atrial fibrillation. It's not perfect, but it gives you some level of understanding to either ease your anxiety or get to a hospital. Um, but another downside is that data does get uploaded into an app. And a number of my patients will say to me, you know, I really don't like the wearables doc because 
I feel like my data is going to be accessible uh, to people I might not want to, ha to have it. Uh, for instance, a life insurance company. It is possible that uh, the benefit that we get from joining an exercise program or saying that we don't smoke tobacco uh, might be a question if an insurance company has access to your data and says, well, it doesn't look like in the last six months you've been to the gym because you have no heart rate variability. And it does look like you've got a lot of dips in your oxygen saturation. So perhaps uh, you might not be telling the truth about what you're doing uh, to enhance your health. But those objections aside, there are some important takeaways, uh, in my opinion, of the conversation so far. Wearable devices are really only as good as the length of time you wear them. What I mean by that is that if you just put your device on when you go to the gym to measure your level of fitness, well, that's great. But it doesn't give you your recovery uh, from that workout. And it doesn't tell you uh, what shape you're in to have your workout the next day. Uh, I believe that lives will be saved as the technology improves uh, for rapidly diagnosing uh, heart arrhythmias and, and heart attacks. I think that asthma and COPD particularly will be uh, improved and medicines tailored to people based upon their oxygen saturations. I think that we are at a really uh, amazing beginning point of devices where in the past we would only see this on in Star Trek with uh, the uh, bones uh, putting this device on a person and rapidly diagnosing uh, a variety uh, of problems. I think that is becoming reality. And within the next three to five years, we're going to see really, really accurate devices that are going to be able to diagnose and treat a variety of illnesses and more importantly, uh, be able to discern whether or not the supplements we take, the diet we're consuming, uh, or the exercise regimen we have uh, are making changes specifically in you. If this was useful, uh, it'd be great if you subscribe uh, or ask any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you.